What's going on guys? Hunt number two out here on the Susquehanna Flats. I'm still gonna upload this even if I don't kill anything because I'm gonna show you um, solo body booting, how it looks, what I do. And uh, feel free to crit critique me if you've done it before or if you haven't done it. Uh, ask, you know, ask any questions you got in the bottom, but let's go ahead and kick this thing off. guys, Chris from Duckalope Outdoors. Hey everybody, Chris from Duckalope Outdoors. Hey folks, how you doing? This is Brian from Duckalope Outdoors. So I didn't catch this before. We were just out here on the uh, opening day, September 1st. And there's some rope tied around this tree. I'm going to go ahead and take that off there. Somebody's probably using it to anchor off of the tree or something like that but I mean it's too easy just to bring an anchor with you but um, I'm gonna take that off that tree before I leave here tonight uh, right now it is four o'clock and I am hoping that the birds either come from across the bay or coming from behind me so I set up a, a U formation here for the spread that's all with V-boards using Big Owl Silhouettes. So I'm 400 yards off the island. That's the closest, uh, the closest land to me, surface land. Um, also got another V-board off here to the right. I got this wind sock. So if you haven't looked into White Rock, it's a pretty neat company. I just got to secure it down here back down to the down to the kayak i might bring some zip ties and that sort of thing with me that way if the wind starts whipping around um it'll stay on there a lot better but with that little movement we got on the kayak we got the white rock flyer that's with the half inch conduit that's what i'm what i'm using it's like 10 foot before i was just using one stake but you can get a connector uh cut it in half so that way it's easier to transport on the kayak and get that uh, connector and connect those pieces back together. So, but as for getting out here, I loaded everything into the jet sled. And the jet sled, it makes it a lot easier to transport these V-boards or if you just have decoys in general. Um, like you've never seen anything like this if you need a goose honey. This is like a flag so you can get their attention. As soon as you get their attention with this, you want to stop using it because then you're pretty much going to make them look at you and they're going to flare them. Um, but as for the kayak blind, this is the Ascend H10 with the, uh, the Redhead or the Northern Flight Cabela's type of kayak blind. Yes, it does fit on the H10. So what I did was on the back corner, I sewed a buckle did it on the other side and the same thing on the front so that way you can keep this up off the off the water now you could turn around and sew on another buckle back here just to keep that up but when i'm paddling you know to and from i'm gonna roll this roll this all the way up and secure it down so that way it's just less of the water uh, the thing with the rapid grass on this thing that i found out is when you put your strands up on the doors if they're too long and they're draping down in the water like that like those little pieces need to be trimmed it's like tugging a boat so um, I'd suggest just trimming it off so I trim my stuff very short and it seems to work for me other things I bring with me out here like I've already done videos to show you what I bring obviously a pair of binoculars that we try to ID your birds before they get to you your body boot box i did a video on that of how to build one that thing comes in super handy like my phone when i left the house was at i think 10 percent and i cut it on from the boat ramp paddled out here about 30 minutes and it charged it all the way up to about 62 percent um, i did a video on what i what i bring in my blind bag so go ahead and check it out but hopefully we can get some birds to come in the wind's starting to pick up the storm is moving out so maybe if they've been hunkered down they will start to come out here. The other thing that I want to point out here is uh, I am wearing waders. So these are the Rogers Working Man waders. They're insulated. Um, 
I mean, it is warm out here. I'm not baking though because I've run cold anyway. So the reason why I'm wearing waders in the early September goose season is because this algae out here, when you're body booting, um, this algae really tore up my legs last time. It got to the point where I had rashes on both my legs all the way up and down. So I figure I'd go ahead and wear waders, keeps the algae off of me. Yeah, I might get a little hot, but hey, just drink the Gatorade and go on with it. But I'm literally standing in the water. So this is uh, all through here. I'll walk on out here to get away from this little tree. But if you're body booting out here on the Susquehanna Flats, of course you want to look for you know stuff that you can walk in where it's about waist deep if not uh, just a little bit below your knee depending on the tide you want to look and make sure if you're at low tide high tide so that way you don't get caught, caught out here with your pants around your ankles trying to get back into a kayak or something like that and if the waist is up here at your chin you know if the water's up here at your chest you ain't going to be able to get back in that kayak without you know getting a whole bunch of water down in your in your waders but as you can see like i can i can literally walk out here for I mean, probably about 100 yards, 100, 150 yards before I even hit the channel. And the water level's actually going down, so now I'm down to my knee. So, it's a, it's a different style of hunting. Um, so, you guys that, you know, timber hunt, hunting the, hunt the timber, it's kind of like that. Just imagine no trees around you. It's just wide open water. So, I'm going to spin the camera around, and y'all can see pretty much how my blind would look, or how it looks besides fixing a white rock decoy because I haven't done that yet. So that's the reason why I get up beside this tree is because I can tuck that that kayak up in that, that tree and it kind of looks like it's as if it's one with it. So yeah, it is pretty cool with the boats, boats driving by. The more water traffic out here, especially during duck season, um, Obviously during goose season, if they're coming along the uh, the shoreline, you know, they'll kick up birds for you and uh, and that actually works in your benefit. So I say, hey, go on with it. There's actually two ducks right there. Let's see if I can. Oh, I'm not sure if y'all can see them on camera or not. They're going away from us. But if you are watching this, hey, do me a favor. Like all YouTubers say, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down, let me know what you, you know, what you initially thought, and uh, leave a comment, you know, if you want me to change some things up, do better editing, do different versions, talk about something, you know, in particular, uh, just leave it in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to do it. Um, I will be having a hunt coming up on Friday, I'm going over to the eastern shore, and also I'm hunting this weekend, so there'll be another video coming out, it'll be dove hunting, some goose hunting, and then next week, we're really going to get into using the wildlife management areas around here in Maryland. So I'll be talking a lot about that too. So stay tuned. And that is when you pull the cord too early. That's what happens. I still had another 20 minutes worth of shooting. Well, there you have it, folks. Sounds like another group coming. Sometimes it's worth just staying out there and just letting it happen. I didn't hear any honking and see any flying except for across the bay, which was normal. And it's 721, which is sunset, and I can hunt 30 minutes past sun past sunset mm -mm -mm. hey you live and you learn now I know to come out here about an hour hour and a half prior to sunset and set up and just wait and then the same thing with the morning for the morning hunt so you get in there set up nice and early wait for that Sun to crack give it about two two and a half hours or at least for this spot and uh, that's about it. Hey, that's what we do. We learn, we share our experience, and that right there 
I mean, it's kind of a kick in the balls, but it happens. We making it work. One stroke at a time. All right. Y'all have fun. I'll see you on the next hunt. It will more than likely be on Friday. So subscribe if you haven't. Leave the thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't like it. Leave a comment. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of it. Duckalope Outdoors, hashtag Team Duckalope. Y'all have a good one.